The Trump administration unveiled its new strategy, which it says will finally win the 17-year-old war on terror. RT's correspondent Dan Cohen takes a look. National Security Advisor John Bolton announced what he called the America First national strategy for counterterrorism on Thursday. It focuses on the Islamic Republic of Iran, ISIS, and Al Qaeda. The proliferation of ISIS and Al Qaeda networks and their propaganda requires a new approach to address the threat to the United States from radical Islamist terrorists. In addition, the United States faces terrorist threats from Iran which remains the most prominent state sponsor of terrorism, uh, really the world's central banker of international terrorism since 1979. The strategy calls ISIS the foremost radical Islamist terror group and notes that al-Qaeda leaders are working to consolidate and expand the group's presence in several regions, including in Syria. That's likely a reference to Idlib province in northern Syria, what U.S. envoy to the anti-ISIS coalition Brett McGurk called the largest al-Qaeda safe haven since 9-11. While a Syrian and Russian military operation to liberate Idlib from its al-Qaeda rulers is on hold thanks to an agreement between Russia and Turkey, President Trump credited himself for preventing the operation after reading a report in the New York Times. It said that they were being surrounded and they were going in and starting literally the next day they were going to drop bombs all over the place and perhaps kill millions of people in order to get 35,000 terrorists. And I put out on social media and elsewhere, I gave Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, everybody these orders, don't let it happen. Contradictions aside, Bolton warned this isn't the Obama administration, and while there aren't many differences between their respective counterterrorism strategies, one is in their approaches to the detention camp at Guantanamo Bay. President Obama promised to close Guantanamo, though ultimately he did not, and the Trump strategy calls to, quote, preserve our ability to detain terrorists and explore ways to better integrate and maximize the utility of this capability. Whether the Trump administration can deliver on its pledge to defeat terrorism while preventing other countries from doing so remains to be seen. In Washington, Dan Cohen, RT. For more, we go to former Pentagon official Michael Malib. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Sure. Bolton stressed that the new anti-terrorism strategy will be different from the Obama administration's. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that uh, there'll be uh, uh, more intolerance of Iran than the Obama administration showed. Clearly, what this is is just a veiled uh, effort to uh, go after Iran. Uh, you'll notice that what was absent uh, was pretty much uh, any mention of uh, jihadi Salafists supported by um, uh, Saudi Arabia and the, and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, but you heard a lot about uh, Hamas and Hezbollah supported by Iran. Uh, the problem with that is that his, his, his goal is to lump everybody into one basket. The Hezbollah and Hamas are known as resistance groups. They're totally different than Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and, and ISIS, which chop off heads, blow up civilians anywhere. You're not, you don't see that. You, it wasn't Shia, which are Hezbollah, that has been catering to uh, going around the world, setting up caliphates and, and uh, launching attacks. But they're still supported by Saudi Arabia and UAE today, the, uh, namely the uh, jihadi Salafists. Well, we have not seen any major terrorist attacks in the United States under the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that will continue on. However, under what uh, scenario do you think the U.S. will go to, would consider going to a full-scale war in Iran? I, if, I think if Israel goads them into it, um, I think that uh, consequ not, nothing on, that has to do with Iran policy today uh, is, is done without looking through the prism of Israel. And, uh, and, and what's strange is that Israel, even after the revolution, used to trade with uh, uh, Iran, namely in arms, because at that time the perceived enemy was Iraq. Today it's just totally different. And, and so now they, they are the perceived enemy. And you have Bolton, who in, back in 2003, when I briefed him once, basically said we're going to go in and take out uh, Baghdad, which was just before the invasion, then Damascus, then Tehran, Libya, Saudi Arabia, which all of those countries at that time were perceived to be the enemies of Israel. This is just a decision made um, uh, that's been delayed, if you will, uh, to, to now from 2003. 
Trump is not, even though Trump has said he was, is willing to speak with the Iranian leadership, the reality is that he is not in charge of his own foreign policy. And that's what is emerging from this. What well, do you think is as much as the fact that Israel has the presidency, or this is being guided as much by Israel, as much as Saudi Arabia? Remember, this was that. Mm -hmm. It was his first trip. It was to Saudi Arabia. There's obviously some built-up partnerships that are going well, on yeah, behind the alliance. scenes. Yeah. So do you think it's, who has a bigger influence right now of President Trump, the Saudis uh, or the Israelis? Well, they're both speaking uh, the same uh, from, from, from the same language, from the same sheet of music at this point. Yeah, they're both listening. Uh, U.S. is supporting Saudi Arabia for its reasons, namely buying all of that military equipment and bringing in jobs. Israel, because of uh, his brother-in-law, because he uh, has moved the embassy and all of that. So, you know, you got to consider now, Israel, in effect, is also becoming a terrorist state itself. It has threatened, basically, uh, in recent days, Lebanon and, and the civilians who live in an area purporting to say that there is underground uh, missile uh, manufacturing facilities. It has scared it scared the uh, Lebanese people like crazy because of that, and now they fear an attack. I mean, is that any different than what uh, another uh, state sponsor is doing? I mean, this is, this is getting out of hand. Absolutely. As we continue to get more and more, I seem to think back to Iraq. I seem mm -hmm. to think back to Libya. How, would it, how can we, are we witnessing the same sort of steps going forward here? Yes. This is a buildup to a crescendo. Of what we've already done. History yeah, what, could what, repeat what, itself. With Iraq. And what we're seeing, what we're seeing here is that uh, we have I Israel against Iran, and what Israel would prefer is that U.S. military go in. So, so would uh, uh, Crown Prince Mo uh, Mohammed bin Salman. He would prefer to have the U.S. attack uh, 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 Iran. He can't do it. He can't even. He can't even uh, defeat. Uh, Yemen, which is next door. So they're, both of those countries are relying on U.S. military. And they, even the Pentagon at this point is hesitant. They're, they're, they're holding back on this. I mean, they're not all full, full bore for this, let's go get Iran, let's, let's, uh, let's change the regime militarily. They're not into that. Well, change isn't always good, and thanks for continuing to clarify the situation for we us. We try. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.